Shemao Israel, Shabbat Shalom, Amibe Sari Stavi, Maisha Baki is here with us as well. Before we go any further, we're going to have the blowing of the shofar. We're going to have our opening song in which we don't own the rights to. And we're going to have our Pledge of Allegiance all in that order. to the Most High. I pledge allegiance to the Most High. The Creator of the Universe. The Creator of the Universe. And to His Word. And to His Word. From which all things came. From which all things came. One camp. One camp. Called Israel. Called Israel. With salvation. With salvation. Truth. Truth. Equity. Equity. Liberty. Liberty. And justice for all and justice for all who hear his commandments who hear his commandments and do them and do them hallelujah I praise and thank the most high for bringing us through this weekend allowing us to enter into his rest i don't know about you but it's been a very interesting week you know um Things have been happening round about us. Uh, people that you saw last Sabbath aren't alive this Sabbath. Uh, all kinds of things are going on, but nonetheless, the Most High is merciful. Our first scripture this Sabbath afternoon is from Isaiah chapter 56, verse 7. It is written, Even then will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Hallelujah. Our next scripture this afternoon is from Proverbs chapter 28, verse 9. It is written, 
He that turns away his ear from hearing Torah, even his prayer shall be abomination. Hallelujah. Our next scripture is our Parsha, our Torah portion from Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. It is written, And El spake all these words, saying, I am Yahweh which have brought thee out of the land of Mitzrayim, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other El before me. You shall not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, Yahweh El, am a jealous El. Visit then the iniquity of the Abbas upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of Yahweh El in vain, for Yah will not hold them guiltless that takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh El. In it you shall not do any work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor thy manny bed, thy maidy bed, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days Yah made heaven and earth to see, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore Yah blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy Abba and thy Amma, that thy days may be long upon the land which Yah thy El gives thee. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor, you shall not lust after thy neighbor's house, you shall not lust after thy neighbor's Isha. Nor his manny bed, nor his matey bed, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to enter into prayer. And I'm going to kneel and face his holy oracle as we pray and spread forth my hands. Not like this, Israel, but like this. This is how we spread forth our hands. Like this. Not like this, but like this. All right? You want to see in one of the prayers, you're going to hear how we spread forth our hands unto the Most High. We don't fold them. We spread forth. Father God, we come humbly but boldly before thy throne of mercy and grace, <coughs> spreading forth our hands unto thee, the author and finisher of our faith. We praise you and thank you, Father Yah, for the great and many manifest, manifold blessings you bestowed upon us. In the course of that of last week, Father Yah, we praise and thank you for allowing us to arise each day with breath in our bodies, activity in our limbs, seemingly in our right minds. We glorify you and lift you up, Father Yah, for blessing us to go out and to come back in. We praise and thank you, Father Yah, for forgiveness of sins. And as we look to you from Daniel 9, we ask that you will hear our cry, O Yah, the great and dreadful well, keeping a covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled, even by departing from my precepts and from my judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy ebeds, the Narvis, which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, our abbas, and to all the people of the land. O Yah, lawfulness belongs unto thee, but unto us confusion of face, as at this day, to the men of Yehuda and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off through all the countries where thou hast driven them, because of their trespass, that they have trespassed against thee. O Yah, to us belong confusion of face to our kings, our princes, our abbas, because we have sinned against thee. 
To Yah El belongs mercies and forgivenesses, though we have rebelled against them. Neither have we obeyed the voice of Yah El to walk in his Torah, which he set before us by his Ebeds, the Narvis. Yea, O Israel, have transgressed thy Torah, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us, and the oath written in the Torah of Moshe, the Ebed of El, because we have sinned against you, Yah, and you have confirmed your words which you spake against us, and against thou judges that judged us, by bringing upon us a great evil, for that the whole heaven have not been done as have been done upon Jerusalem. As it is written in the Torah of Moshe, all this evil has come upon us. Yet may we not our prayer before Yah El that we might turn from our iniquities and understand Yah's truth. Therefore have Yah watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. For Yah El is lawful in all his works which he do, for we obey not his voice. And now, O Yah El, that has brought thy people forth out of the land of Mitzrayim with a mighty hand, and has gotten thee renowned as at this day, we have sinned, we have done wickedly. O Yah, according to all thy lawfulness, we beseech thee. Let thy anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city, Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because for our sins and for the iniquities of our others, Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. Now, therefore, O our El, hear the prayer we thy ebeds and these supplications, and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for your sake. O our El, incline thy ear in here. Open my eyes and behold our desolations and the city which is called by thy name, for we do not present our supplications before thee for our lawfulnesses, but for thy great mercies. O Yah, hear, O Yah, forgive, O Yah, hearken and do defer not for thy own sake, O Yah, El, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. We ask, Father Yah, that you would remember we your Ebeds this day. From the Ebed's prayer in Psalm 143 that says, Shema, I'll pray, O Yah, give ear to our supplications, and thy faithfulness answer us, and in thy lawfulness. Enter not in the judgment with we thy Ebed's, for in thy sight shall no man live and be justified. For the enemy have persecuted our souls, it has smitten our lives down to the ground, it has made us to dwell in darkness since those that have been long dead. Therefore is our ruach overwhelmed within us, our hearts within us is desolate. We remember the days of old, we meditate on all thy works, we muse on the work of thy hands. We stretch forth our hands unto thee, our soul thirsts after thee as a thirsty land, Selah. Hear us speedily, O Yah, ruach's fail. Hide not thy face from us, lest we be like unto them that go down into the pit. Cause us to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do we trust. Cause us to know the way wherein we should walk, for we lift up our souls unto thee. Deliver us, O Yah, from our enemies. We flee unto thee to hide us. Teach us to do thy will, for thou art our El, thy Ruach is good. Lead us into the land of uprightness. Quicken us, O Yah, for thy name's sake. For thy lawfulness sake, bring our souls out of trouble. And of thy mercy cut off our enemies and destroy all them that afflict our souls, for we are thy ebeds. We ask for mercy right now as you're welcome in the midst of this day of rest, in the midst of our homes, in the midst of us. You're welcome here, Father Yah. We ask that you would fill me and my Isha fresh with thy ruach. Quicken your ruach upon us, Father Yah. And allow us to manifest the fruit of thy ruach in our lives. Keep a watch guard over our hearts and our minds, even our mouths and our eyes, Father Yah. Bless those that would join us this day. We ask that you would be with each and every one of us, Father, and open up the eyes of our understanding and quicken them this day. We ask, Father, that you would bless us to continue to be a blessing unto the widower, the widows, the fatherless, the oppressed and poor. Empower us, Father Yah, to continue, Father, to speak a word in season 
to those who are weary and bereaved, Father Yah. Even, Father, allow us to speak truth to that newcomer so that newcomer can have a relationship with you and not with us. Allow us to deal with your word, Father, honestly and truthfully, Father, and not deceitfully. We ask this in Yeshua HaMashiach name we pray. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, I praise and thank him, but in Psalm 143, verse 6, we just read how we stretch forth our hands unto Yah. Never like this, Israel. Never like this. That's something that we learned from our forefathers, and that's one of them pagan rituals that we need to leave on the other side of the Jordan along with them turkeys and them booty noodles. Some of you all prepped off and I'm only going to be around my family. I'm only going to do this. I'm only going to do that. Never let your good be evil spoken of. So many people right now are in the midst of compromising when it come down to the most highest word. That compromising assembly in the last book of this Bible, it speaks volume about their actions. We, we shouldn't want to assimilate ourselves. Let me tell you something. You run around with your pumpkin pie, your turkey, your cranberry sauce on what is it, the fourth Thursday of, of November? Yeah, it's the third or fourth Thursday, whatever date it falls on every year. But you're running around celebrating and concurring, casting your vote with those who massacred people that was living on this land. Then you turn around on the sixth day. All right? First and foremost, Thanksgiving, when you look it up in Scripture, it means giving thanks. Nothing to do for Turkey. But then you turn around on the sixth day, the day of preparation. And you want to run out here to these Black Friday sales. You know what they did on Black Friday? They sold brown people as slaves for half price. Now, you got to ask yourself, is your living in vain? You got to ask yourself, do the most high get the glory, the praise, and the honor out of you baking pumpkin pie and giving, uh, uh, taking into cranberry sauce? I don't need the fourth Thursday of every November to eat turkey. I eat turkey all year long. Matter of fact, in my house, my Isha refused to make a dinner that looks like or even sounds like anything that got to do with those paying days. We got to choose ye this day, Israel, who we going to serve. All right? And that's my preamble or my segue into today's topic, part five. Let's revisit the fool, foolishly, foolishness, fools, fools, and folly, part five. We're going to start at the book of Ayah, Job, chapter one. And you want to see and hear when we read the very first verse while we as Israel need to remain kadosh. How many of you all know what kadosh means? It means set apart. Let's go over to Ayah, chapter one, verse one. And we'll be reading from one through 22. And we ain't gonna be long today. It is written, let me get some glasses. Make sure I can see. <laughs> I'm 
like DMC. Why you wear those glasses so I can see? <laughs> I have chapter 1 verse 1. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Ayab, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared Elohim and eschewed evil. There were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was seven thousand sheep, three thousand camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 Shiite asses, and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were going about, that Ayab sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Ayab said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed Elohim in their hearts. Thus did Ayab continually. Now there was a day when the sons of Elohim came to present themselves before Yah. And Satan came also among them. Yah said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered, Yah said, From going to and fro in the earth, from walking up and down in it. Yah said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my Ebed, Ayah, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that fears Elohim and eschews evil? Then Satan answered Yah and said, Do Ayah fear Elohim for not? Has not thou made an hedge about him? and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thy hand now, and touch all that he has, and he will curse thee to thy face. Yah said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only put only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of Yah. There was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in the eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Ayab and said, The oxen were plowing, the asses feeding beside them, and the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the Ebeds with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of Elohim has fallen from heaven and have burnt up the sheep. And the Ebeds and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away, yea, and slain the Ebeds with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners 
of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Then I up arose and rent his mantle, shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground and worshipped, and said, Naked came I out of my Amma's womb, and naked shall I return there. Yah gave, and Yah have taken away. Barukaba, blessed be the name of Yah. And all this I absent not, nor charged Elohim foolishly. Hallelujah. We got a lot of things going on. First and foremost, our first stop is in the last verse, the last word. Foolishly. Alright? You might have heard this word in other exhortations we did in, in this segment. Well, this particular time is something totally different. It's a new word alert. It's entry number 8604. The scriptural Hebrew word tipla. And it means frivolity, and that means not having any serious purpose or value, trifling, silly. And it goes on to mean folly. And then this word tipla, T I P L A H was from entry number 8602, Tafel, T-A-P-H-E-L, which means to smear, to plaster, or slime, unsavory, untempt, untempered. Listen, I like 22, because at the end of all you heard, in this first chapter, the first 21 verses, 22 says, And all this I absent not, nor charged Elohim foolishly. Quick question. Will you still bless the Most High? When you got verses 13 to 18 going on in your life, all right, 13 to 18, 15 says the Sabaeans fell upon all the sheep and the, the oxen and the asses. It says the oxen and the asses in verse uh, 14, but 15 is the first event. The second event is in verse 16, while he was yet speaking. The third event was in verse 17. While he was yet speaking. And the fourth event was in verse 18. While he was yet speaking. Are you going to still praise and bless the name of the Most High. In the midst of you getting the post, the email, the text, the phone call. About those whom you care about and love. So did. Let's go back to verse 1 in Ayah, chapter 1, verse 1. This begins to paint a picture of the mindset of the type of people where to be in the eyes of the Most High. Listen to what scripture said about Ayah. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Ayah. One, that man was perfect. Two, upright. Three, a feared Elohim. And four, a shrewd evil. How many of you all are shown up not booty uh, uh, noodle eaters and can show up for shoe evil? How many of you all listening to this show up a shoe evil? 
That word Eshu was entry number 5493, and it was the scriptural Hebrew word, soar, S-O-O-R. And it means to turn off, decline, leave, remove. How many of you, Israel, are willing to turn off evil? To decline evil when it comes to your door. To remove evil when it pops up around you. Me and my Isha is already prepared. Once we got through uh, 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 Samuel, uh, uh, Kings and Chronicles, and started on this path for it, I have been. Uh, next week, y'all willing, it's going to be in song. And then by that third Sabbath after that, it's going to be in Proverbs. We already prepared for the great and mighty falling away. <laughs> Israel falls away from the truth because they don't want to eschew evil. Let's look at verse 2. Very important because we want to explain some things. There were born unto him seven sons, three daughters, ten children. All right. Verse three talked about his substance. All right. Seven thousand sheep, three thousand camels, five hundred yoke of oxen, five hundred she asses, and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east now listen to verse 4 his sons went and feasted in their houses every one his day some in Israel say well they were feasting uh, every one his day that was their birthdays and all of this no the man had seven sons it probably descended from the oldest to the youngest at what house we going to eat at and drink at on a daily basis. Some may say, well, Ebed, you know, they still were partying and they got killed. Okay. But it don't say his day actually means somebody's birthday. Listen, are we going to believe the scriptures or are we going to believe man and some stuff made up? Listen to how our interceding father, the PR man, would do. And let me explain to some of y'all what the PR man is. The PR man is the priest, the prophet, the provider, the protector the praiser, and the prayer warrior of the home. Those six functions. He looked what he did in verse 5. Aya. It was so when the days of their feasting were going about that Aya sent and sanctified them, rose up early in the morning, offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all, for I have said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed Elohim in their hearts. Thus did I have continually. Some of you all are sitting around waiting for the prayers of your wife and waiting for the prayers of your husband. In this day and time, we all got to work out our soul salvation with fear and trembling. I can't seek forgiveness from the Most High for the sins of my Isha. And she can't seek forgiveness from the Most High for the sins of mine. Each one have to answer for themselves. Some of you are married to people that wouldn't even say a prayer for you if you was choking. Some of you all are in so many doctrines 
that who are you praying to? A lot of prayers that people say, oh, Ebed, I'm praying for you and your Isha. I curse every prayer that's not aligned with the perfect will of the Most High for me and mine because I know what his will is for me and mine. You arbitrarily standing on the outside of somebody's marriage, trying to pray something into their marriage, and the ruach within that person are uh, expelling out. <laughs> Let's take a look. Verse six, then. Verse six says. There was a day when the sons of Elohim came to present themselves before Yah, and Satan came also among them. Let's go over to 122, 1 Kings 22. This ain't the first time that it was a meeting going on in the heavenly realm. Let's go over to 1 Kings 22. Let me show you something about the Elohim that you all serve that you all really don't pick up on. All right? 1 Kings verse 22. Chapter 22, rather. And we're going to start at uh, verse 15. And we're going to read the 23. So he came to the king. The king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle? Or shall we forbid? Excuse me. And he answered him, Go and prosper, for Yah shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of Yah? And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. And Yah said, these have no master. Let them return every man to his house in Shalom. <coughs> and the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me but evil? And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of Yah. I saw Yah sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And Yah said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner, and another said on that manner, and there came forth a ruach and stood before Yah and said, I will persuade him. Yah said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying ruach in the mouth of all his novies. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Verse 23. Now therefore, behold, Yah have put a lying ruach in the mouth of all these thy navis, and Yah have spoken evil concerning thee. So we see now here in 1 Kings 22 and here in Ayah chapter 1 verse 6 that in several board meetings, you know, at least two so far in scripture that was going on in the heavenlies. It's very important to understand that here in Ayah chapter 1 verse 6 Although they used the term the sons of Elohim, the last part of the verse 6 says, and Satan came also among them. He's an evil son, a 
fallen son of Elohim, but nonetheless a son. But listen, 7 and 8 says, Yah said unto Satan, Whence comest thou, Satan answered, Yah said, from going to and fro on the earth, from walking up and down in it. Yah said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my Ebed Ayah? One, the same thing is being said in verse 8 that was said in verse 1. Now the Most High is saying this. Can the Most High say that about you? Or you two in the booty noodles and turkey and candy canes and Easter eggs. If we're not supposed to practice none of the oppressor's ways, choose none of the oppressor's ways, then why is it that Israel I ain't talking about no swine eating heathen that, that go on the first day and do what they do until they can't do it no more. Continue to do you, especially if you hollering about you read the same book of KJV. Well, all them lies you've been living by and living under preaching and teaching ain't found in here. You had a whole year last year. Your congregation got paid very well to stay up out of that den of confusement that you call a church, that you call a camp, that you call a place of worship and read this for themselves. But the Most High sees who eschews evil and who don't. I don't have to have a car with this. I don't have to have a filter with this. I don't. I don't even have to sell this. This sells itself. <laughs> yes, indeed. Listen to what the Most High said about Ayah. Same thing in verse 1. Here in verse 8. Has thou considered my Ebed Ayah? One, there is none like him in the earth. Two, a perfect and upright man. Three, one that fears Elohim. And four, and the shoes evil. Satan had a rebuttal. So don't be surprised when, you know, things are happening in your life and that foul spirit had a nerve to say something back. <laughs> well, <laughs> you see here the creator, the father, the Abba of all Ruachs. The father of all spirits is contending with the same thing. Because verse 9 says, Then Satan answered Yah and said, Do I fear Elohim for not? Now listen to how Satan, being Satan, and his name means to accuse, listen to how Satan accuses Ayah in verse 10. Has thou not made a hedge about him and about all his house and about all that he had for every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. But listen to verse 11. But put forth thy hand now and touch all that he has and he will curse thee to thy face. Although it's Satan is picking on Ayah, verse 11 is very important because now Satan is telling the most high to do to Ayah things that the most high wouldn't normally do to Ayah. Now listen to how the most high reverted back. Verse 12. Yah said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has is in thy power. So all that he had, the Most High gave that 
for Satan to have power over just for a season. But here's the, the, the hit in the end of verse 12. Only put himself, only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of Yah. Listen, he had rules. He had to follow something. Why does Israel think they don't have to follow nothing? Satan had rules. And went on to say, from 13 to 18, them four events, all that he had was taken away. 19 says, and there behold, and behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and they are dead and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Quick questioning. When will you arrive? Because Tony said that I arose, rent his mantle, shaved his head, fell down upon the ground and worshiped. When are you going to arise? Look, you're going to have conditions, circumstances, and situations that are not favorable happen to you in this walk called life. Living this truth. But let's go over to the book of uh, Jonas. Let's see what happened. All right? Go over to Jonah, chapter 1, verse 17. And we're going to read. Remember now, we on Ayah, chapter 1, verse 20. But Jonah, chapter 1, verse 17 says, Now, Yah had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Chapter 2, verse 1 says, Then Jonas prayed unto Yah his El out of the fish's belly. Are you going to sit in the midst of trying conditions, circumstances, and situations three days and three nights before you open up your mouth? I'm one of them that when you in law enforcement and you walking up upon me and trying to detain me, I'm praying that. While you walking me to the car trying to put the handcuffs on me, I'm praying that. When are you going to arise? Some of you all think that your prayers don't count or you don't have the uh, education to go before the Most High yourself. Don't believe some pimped out dude. Only a pimp will tell you that. Anybody that tell you that you up in the scriptures and don't know what you doing and blah, blah, blah. They try to keep you dependent upon them. Not have you dependent upon the Most High the way it should be. And this is where the problems come in. Listen. I have said in 21, Naked came I out of my armor's womb, and naked shall I return there. Yah gave, Yah have taken away. Blessed be the name of Yah. And all this I have said not, nor charge Elohim foolishly. You still want to bless the Most High? You done lost everything that you had on this physical plane of existence. Let's keep it moving. Let's go to the next chapter. Chapter 2. We're going to read verses 1 through 13. We got one stop here. Here it go. Chapter 2, verse 1. Again, there was a day when the sons of Elohim 
came to present themselves before Yah, and Satan came also among them to present himself before Yah. Yah said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered Yah and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Yah said unto Satan, Has thou considered my Ebed Ayah? One, that there is none like him in the earth. Two, a perfect and upright man. Three, one that fears Elohim. Four, and eschews evil. Five, and still he holds fast his integrity, although thou move me against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered, Yah and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man have will he give for his life. But put forth thy hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. Yah said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So went Satan forth from the presence of Yah and smote I out with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a pot shirt to scrape himself with fall, and he sat down among the ashes. Then said his Isha unto him, Dost thou still retain thy integrity? Curse Elohim and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish Isha speaks. What shall we receive good at the hand of Elohim? And shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Ayab sin with his lips. Now when Ayab's three friends heard of all this evil that was come upon him, they came every one from his own place. Eliphaz, the Temanite, Bildad, the Shuhite, Zophar, the Namathite, for they had made an appointment together to come mourn him and to comfort him. And when they lifted up their eyes afar off and knew him not, they lifted up their voice and wept. And they rent every one his mantle and sprinkled dust upon their heads toward heaven. So they sat down with him upon the ground seven days and seven nights. And none spake a word unto him, for they saw that his grief was very great. Hallelujah. Man, look, I'm going through something and you try and pull up on me. And you get to me and you sitting down seven days and seven nights and not saying nothing. You ain't even praying. I'm going to tell you some real good stuff. You need to run. Because somewhere along the line, <laughs> I'm going to acquire some strength from somewhere and start laying hands on you. I'm trying to tell you something. You calling yourself coming to comfort me. That's a whole other story. Let's look at verse 10. I have said unto his Isha, Thou speakest as one of the foolish Isha speaks. What shall we see good at the hand of Elohim, and shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Ayab sin with his lips. Here, this word foolish in this instance was entry number 5039, Nebala. N-E-B-A-L-A-H It means wickedness, crime, punishment, folly, vile, villainy. Alright? It was a crime what his Isha was saying to him about cursing Elohim and dying. Because Aya wanted to maintain his integrity, his relationship with the Mosai. 
So we go back and look at the beginning part of this story. Verse 1 is interesting. We got another round table in the heavenlies. The sons of Elohim came to present themselves before Yah. Satan came also among them to present himself before Yah. All right? And then, you know, the usual questioning in verse 2, you know. Same way in chapter 1, verse 7, you know. Uh, 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 whence cometh thou, you know, Satan answered Yah and said from going to and fro in the earth, from walking up and down in it. Most high pretty told him. Yah said unto Satan, hast thou considered my ebed ayah? But listen to the same breakdown again. But it gets deep. One, none like him in all earth. Two, perfect and upright man. Three, one that fear Elohim. Four, eschews evil. All right, chapter two, verse three, so far matches verse eight in chapter one and chapter in uh, verse one in chapter one. Except for here in chapter 2, verse 3, it's a fifth element now injected. It says, And still he hold fast his integrity, although thou move me against them to destroy him without cause. Listen, listen. This word integrity meant innocence. It was defined as innocence. When you look up in uh, entry number 8538, it was a scriptural Hebrew word, Tuma, T-U-M-M-A-H. So now, because Satan lost round one in chapter one, now I uh, got a fifth thing Injected or added to his definition from the most high of Ayah. How many are trying to keep that integrity? And I ain't even talking about, you know, you staying at home, but you send your cousin by your people's house to get a plate of booty noodles. How many got that kind of integrity? Where's your integrity? When it comes to the things of the most high. This is how I know a lot of you all, you all have not been immersed in Yeshua HaMashiach name for the remission of your sins. Because you don't have the Ruach. The Ruach would show you. Yo, that's still celebrating. That's still being involved in paganism. A lot of you all don't like the fact that Exodus 23, 13 tell you don't have the name of other Elohim in your lips. I woke up this morning. Somebody changed the name of the group from uh, 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 Yah's word to Yah's business to Baal's business. I've been in this group for over a, a year as an admin. I kindly parted ways this morning. You're not having me hemmed up in no mess like that. Stop inviting me to them groups that y'all want to keep flip-flopping the name with and all of that. Some of you all need to sit down and shut up and revisit the name of Elohim from Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. Because although Psalm 68 verse 4 speaks on Y-A-H, start looking up them names in Genesis 1 verse 1, the name for Elohim. A lot of them names come back uh, uh, that attach to Elohim. A lot of them come back Y-E-H, not Y-A-H. You going to be mad with me over a vowel point? Look, y'all. Y'all gotta figure out what y'all saying and doing. Look. Verse 3 was the whole crux of this chapter. 
although thou move me against him to destroy him without cause. Satan didn't have that kind of power. He had to go get permission to use whatever it is he could use to affect Ayah. Let's keep it moving. Let's go over to chapter 4. Verse 1. Then Eliphaz, the Temanite, answered and said, If we are said to commune with thee, will thou be grieved, but who can withhold himself from speaking? Behold, thou hast instructed many, and thou hast strengthened the weak hands. Thy words have upholden him that was fallen, and thou hast strengthened the feeble knees. But now it is come upon thee, and thou faints. It touches thee, and thou art troubled. Is not this thy fear, thy confidence, thy hope in the uprightness of thy ways? Remember, I pray thee, whoever perished being innocent, or where were the lawful cut off? Even as I have seen they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. By the blast of Elohim they perish, and by the breath of his nostrils are they consumed. The roaring of the lion, the voice of the fierce lion, and the teeth of the young lions are broken. The old lion perish for lack of prey, and the stout lion's whelps are scattered abroad. Now a thing secretly... brought to me, was brought to me, and my ear received a little thereof. And the thoughts from the visions of the night when deep sleep falls on man, fear came upon me and trembling, which made all my bones to shake. Then a ruach passed before my face. The hair of my flesh stood up. It stood still, but I could not discern the form thereof, an image was before my eyes. There was silence, and I heard a voice saying, Shall mortal man be more just than Elohim? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? Behold, he put no trust in his ebeds, and his malics he charged with folly. How much less in them that dwell in houses of clay, whose foundation is in the dust which are crushed before the moth, they are destroyed from morning to evening. They perish forever without any regard in it. Do not their excellency which is in them go away. They die even without wisdom. Hallelujah. I'll stop here. Verse 18. Behold, he put no trust in his ebeds and his mallets. Be charged with folly. Listen. It's interesting, people. Very interesting. This word folly. Entry number 8417. Tahola. T O H O L A H. I know it sounds like a beautiful name, Tahola. But it actually means folly. Alright? And the definition was bluster. B-L-U-S-T-E-R. To behave pompously, boisterously, noisily, self-assertive, talk with empty threats. The next word in the definition was braggadocio. Empty, boasting. A boastful manner of speech or behavior. And the last word in the definition, fatuity. F-A-T-U-I-T-Y. And it means having false and perfect. So, in essence, those who got charged with follies he put no trust in his ebeds and his malics he charged with folly. The malics, 
where the ones running around doing some things that they shouldn't have been doing. Running around with their behavior, doing things that they shouldn't have had none of them. Satan shouldn't have did what he did in Ezekiel. Or is it Isaiah? Isaiah, behold, I will, Isaiah 14, I will sit on and take over the mount of the congregation and sit on, I will be like them. Them five eyes will get anybody thrown out of a, a situation that the Most High is trying to definitely take on. Listen, verse 19 says, How much less than them that dwell in houses of clay, whose foundation is in the dust, which are crushed before them all? Some of you all may be dealing with little ones that are trying to explain how Elohim created this, that, and the third. And some of them may be going to schools and... Uh, 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 the school is telling them that they came out of organisms out of the sea and uh, 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 ancient alien to tell you how the uh, 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 aliens came down to earth in the spaceship and created man. Well, look. Here in verse 19, it shows us how our foundation is in the dust. All right. This is Eliphaz talking to Aya. Listen to how he breaks the things down. Some of you all got to understand your work of an Ebed in verses 3 and 4. Behold, thou hast instructed many, thou hast strengthened the weak hands. Thy words have upholden him that was falling, and thou hast strengthened the feeble knees. That's the work of the Ebed. You ain't supposed to be take your blessing and turn your back on everybody. Nah, you're supposed to be around for it. But listen to what Eliphaz is saying unto Ayah, but in verse 5 in chapter 4. But now it is come upon thee, and thou faint. It touches thee, and thou art troubled. Is not this thy fear, thy confidence, thy hope, and the uprightness of thy ways? Remember, I pray thee, whoever perished being innocent, or where were the lawful cut off? Maintain your ways in front of the Most High. Stop trying to please man. If you can please man, that means you ain't pleasing the Most High. If you pleasing the Most High, that shows you ain't pleasing man. We serve a jealous Elohim, Israel. Never forget that. We're going to keep it moving. Our next stop, turn the page. Chapter 5, 1 through 27. Our stops are in verses 2 and 3. Call now, if there be any that will answer thee, and to which of the saints will thou turn? For wrath kills the foolish man, and envy slays the silly one. I have seen the foolish taking root, but suddenly I cursed this habitation. His children are far from safety. They are crushed in the gate. Neither is there any to deliver them, whose harvest the hungry eats up and takes it even out of the thorns, and the robber swallows up their substance. Although affliction comes not forth of the dust, neither do troubles spring out of the ground, yet man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. I will seek unto Elohim, and unto Elohim would I commit my cause which do great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number, who gives rain upon the earth, sends waters upon the fields, to set up on high those that be low, 
that those which mourn may be exalted to safety. He disappoints the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. He takes the wise in their own craftiness and the counsel of the forward is carried headlong. They meet with darkness in the daytime and grope in the noonday as in the night. But he saves the poor from the sword, from their mouth, and from the hand of the might. So the poor have hope, and iniquity stops her mouth. Behold, happy is the man whom Elohim corrects. Therefore despise not thou the chastening of El Shaddai. For he makes sore and binds up. He wounds and his hands make whole. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. In famine he shall redeem thee from death. And in war from the power of the sword. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shall thou be afraid of destruction when it comes. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Neither shall thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at shalom with thee. And thou shalt know that thy tabernacle shall be in shalom, and thou shalt visit thy habitation, and shall not sin. <coughs> thou shalt know also that thy seed shall be great, and thy offspring as the grass of the earth. Thou shalt come to thy grave in a full age, like as a shock of corn comes in, in his season. Lo this, we have searched it, so it is, hear it, and know thou it for thy good. Hallelujah. Look, man. From verse 6 to 27, although affliction comes not forth of the dust, neither do trouble spring out of the ground, yet man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. <laughs> Some stuff going on here. Let's look at this word foolish in verse 2. All right. Verse 2 and 3. They both have the same entry number for the word foolish. All right. Entry number 191. But listen to the scriptural Hebrew word. Evil. E-V-I-Y-L. Evil. And it means to be perverse or silly. For wrath kills the perverse man and envy slays the silly one. And I took a look at this word, uh, uh, silly. That word silly was entry number 6601. And it meant to delude, to deceive, or mislead. A lot of you all are listening to silly people telling you what they heard somebody else say about these scriptures and about these holy days and y'all just as silly as they are for following them and not checking none of that. Keep telling you. I ain't seen no scripture in, in uh, uh, the scriptures yet that talk about a breaking time. Yeah, you gotta wait for this and wait for the barley and metrium to celebrate something when you Hebrew. Y'all crazy, man. It don't even sound right to me. And then y'all saying that, well, you got to wait for the, the barley in Israel to... The first Passover wasn't even in Israel. Many of you all don't know the name of uh, 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 the land of Jerusalem before it became, you know, a well-known city. It was the Jebusites. The land of the Jebusites. 
but you want to talk and tell people something you heard somebody else say. Nothing you study will not let you study the notes of uh, 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 this one and that one. Y'all crazy. I couldn't do it. Verse 3 said, I have seen the foolish taking root, but suddenly I curse this habitation. Some of y'all are wondering, well, who he, who is he that how about he be cursing people prayers? Man, that mess gonna wither up and dry away, fall off. A lot of y'all running around trying to pray some uh, prayers on people and for people and all it is. Chapter 5, verse 16 says, So the poor have hope, and iniquity stops her mouth. Notice it uses a feminine term, her. Don't use a male term. Same, same verses in uh, our Psalms. All iniquity shall stop her mouth. Y'all better understand where the perversity and the twistedness comes in at. Because some of them herds out there, H-E-R's, ain't speaking good for you. And a lot of you all are, are betting a farm on what they saying. Listen to 17. Behold, happy is the man whom Elohim corrects. <coughs> Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of El Shaddai. 18. For he makes sore and binds up, he wounds and his hands make whole. 19. He shall deliver thee in six troubles, yea, in seven, there shall no evil touch thee. In famine, he shall redeem thee from death and war from the power of the sword. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shall thou be afraid of destruction when it comes. At destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. Neither shall thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. Look, for thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at Shalom with thee. Listen, you better read Psalm 91 and understand. I don't know about you watching this, but the people that uh, hang out with me and my Isha in our prayer space, we let them know about Psalm 91 verse, verse 8. Many of y'all know verse 1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. They don't say nothing about Baal, no GD, no nothing. It says most high. Uh-oh. So a lot of y'all with y'all churchianity mindsets refuse to eschew evil, but keep teaching in the name of evil. You don't understand verse 8. Verse 8 says, only with your eyes shall you see and behold the reward of the wicked. Only with your eyes. They don't read like uh, Psalm 23. Yea, though I walk through. No, only with your eyes. <laughs> that means it, come not, it comes not near your dwelling. Let's keep it moving. We ain't got too much longer. Our next stop is Job chapter 12. We read 1 through 25. <coughs> That's our fifth stop. We only got eight stops. We got three more stops after this. No, y'all ain't like something wrong with him. He always talking about we ain't gonna be long, but he always it. It's the Sabbath day. What you gotta do? Go to work. What you gotta do? Go shopping. What you trying to do? Finish up your plate of booty noodles. What you trying to do? What you saying? Who come from around this? <laughs> So I can see, what you saying? Why is he doing this, doing that? Bad enough, it get dark early. I ain't even gonna lie to you, cause <laughs> I'm going like from sundown on the seventh day all the way up to sundown on the sixth day, I'm gone. I'm at work. I enjoy the Sabbath to be able to rest and refresh and rejuvenate. I enjoy it. I don't know about you. 
I don't know what twisted doctrine you've been sipping off of. A bunch of gossip. Go sit. Go sit. Go sit. I don't know what you've been hanging on to. I hope and pray that you reading the same word I'm reading. Job chapter 12, 1 through 25. And Ayah answered and said, No doubt, but ye are the people, and wisdom shall die with you. But I have understanding as well as you. I am not inferior to you. Put that on a shirt for me, honey. Yea, who knoweth not such things as these? I am as one mocks of his neighbor who calls upon Elohim, and he answers him, the just upright man is laughed to scorn. He that is ready to slip with his feet is as a lamp despising the thought of him that is at ease. The tabernacles of robbers prosper and they that provoke Elohim are secure into whose hand Elohim brings abundantly. But ask now the beasts and they shall teach thee and the fowls of the air, and they shall tell thee, or speak to the earth, and it shall teach thee, and the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee. Who knows not in all these that the hand of Yah has wrought this, in whose hand is the soul of every living thing, and the breath of all mankind? Do not the ear try words and the mouth taste its meat? With the ancient is wisdom and then live for days understanding. With him is wisdom and strength. He have counsel and understanding. Behold, he breaks down and it cannot be built again. He shuts up a man and there can be no opening. Behold, he withholds the waters and they dry up. Also he sends them out and they overturn the earth. With him is strength and wisdom. The deceived and the deceiver are his. He leads counselors away spoiled and makes the judges fools. He looses the bond of kings and gird their loins with a girdle. He leads princes away spoiled and overthrows the mighty. He removes away the speech of the trusty and takes away the understanding of the aged. He pours contempt upon princes and weakens the strength of the mighty. He discovers deep things out of darkness and brings out to light the shadow of death. He increases the nations and destroys them. He enlarges the nations and straightens them again. He takes away the heart of the chief of the people of the earth and causes them to wander in a wilderness where there is no way. They grope in the dark without light and he makes them to stagger like a drunken man. Hallelujah. Listen, I am here spitting the counsel and the, the might of the Most High to Eliphaz and them home Zophar he talking to now. Go back to chapter 11, verse 1. All right. Listen, y'all. Verse 3 says, I am not inferior to you. And I'm going to put that on the t-shirt quick. <laughs> but let's look at verse 17 and talk about this word fools. He leads counselors away spoiled and makes the judges fools. This word here in verse 17 in chapter 12 was entry number 1984. But listen to what this word what is. This word is halal. <laughs> if anybody know anything about any other language, you know the word halal. It means to make a show, to boast, to raid, to celebrate, 
mad against. So the Most High makes these judges mad against you, makes these judges uh, uh, to make a show in front of you, make these judges to boast and to rave and celebrate that they ain't you. All of this is the resume of the Most High. I ask you all, please, understand the Elohim that you serve. Because when we was in Job chapter 1, we ended up back in 1 Kings 22, dealing with uh, 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 the Most High putting a lie in the mouth of somebody's prophet. That's what the scriptures say to you. Listen to verse 10. Anybody that got anything that they're wondering about our creator. Verse 10 is the sum of all things. All right. Verse 10 says. In whose hand is the soul of every living thing. And the breath of all mankind. The most high. He's in charge of that. It's his ruach. Listen to 16. Dealing with deception. With him. The most high strength and wisdom. The deceived. Meaning those being lied to and the deceiver, the one doing the lying. Listen to what the scriptures say, who they belong to. The most high. Y'all got to stop messing around, man. Now y'all running around eating at foreign tables and try to drag that stuff back this way. It don't work that way. Let's go to our next stop, our sixth stop. Job chapter 24. We're looking at verse 12. It is written, Why seem times are not hidden from El Shaddai? Do they that know him not see his days? Some remove the landmarks. They violently take away flocks and feed thereof. They drive away the ass of the obelisk. They take the widow's ox for a pledge. They turn the needy out of the way. The poor of the earth hide themselves together. Behold, as wild asses in the desert, go they forth to their work. Rising be times for prey, the wilderness yields food for them and for their children. They reap every one his corn in the field, and they gather the vintage of the wicked. They cause the naked to lodge without clothing, that they have no covering in the cold. They are wet with the showers of the mountains and embrace the rock for want of a shelter. They pluck the fatherless from the breast and take a pledge of the poor. They cause him to go naked without clothing and they take away the sheep from the hungry, which make oil within their walls and tread their wine presses and suffer thirst. Men groan from out of the city and the soul of the wounded cries out. Yet Elohim lays not folly to them. They are of those that rebel against the light. They know not the ways thereof, nor abide in the paths thereof. The murder rising with the light kills the poor and needy, and in the night is as a thief. The eye also of the adulterer waits for the twilight, saying, No eye shall see me, and disguise his face. In the dark they dig through houses which they had marked for themselves in the daytime, 
they know not the light. For the morning is to them even as the shadow of death. If one know them, they are in the terrors of the shadow of death. He is swift as the waters, their portion is cursed in the earth. He beholds not the way of the vineyards. Draw in heat, consume the snow waters, so do the grave those which have sinned. The womb shall forget him, the worm shall feed sweetly on him. He shall be no more remembered, and wickedness shall be broken as a tree. He evil entreats the barren that bears not and does not good to the widow. He draws also the mighty with his power. He rises up and no man is sure of life. Though it be given him to be in safety, whereon he rests, yet his eyes are upon their ways. They are exalted for a little while, but are gone and brought low. They are taken out of the way as all other, and cut off as the tops of the ears of corn. And if it be not so now, who will make me a liar and make my speech worth nothing? Hallelujah. Let's go to 12. Men grown out of the city, and the soul of the wounded cries out, yet Elohim lays not folly to them. This word folly, back again, entry number 8604, Tipler. That frivolity, not having any serious purpose of value, trifling, silly. Then it was the word folly. Then it came from entry number 8602, Tafel, T-A-P-H-E-L, to smear, to plaster or slime, unsavory, untempered. Listen. I hope and pray that we understand our position. Because a lot of people are going to be charged by the Most High with a lot of things. As you look here in this same chapter, 24-21, he evil entreats the barren that bears not and does not good to the widow. A lot of you all are wondering why I say when I pray, you know, empower us to be a blessing unto the widower, the widows, the fatherless, the oppressed and poor. The tenets of the Torah can be uh, 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 literally uh, 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 defined in the back of the book, in the book of Yaqub. Chapter 126 and 27 that talks about what pure religion is. I ask you all to be mindful of what you're saying and what you're doing. Be mindful. A lot of you all are not trying to help the widow and wonder why you're not blessed, why you don't have, and why you can't get, and why this is this, that's that. Thirteen says, they are of those that rebel against the light. They know not the ways thereof, nor abide in the paths thereof. They are of those that rebel against Torah, against the law. <clears throat> it ain't so much dealing with turning on the light, turning off the light. Scripture defines uh, 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 the law as light. I hope and pray, people, we get it together soon. Let's go to our seventh stop, Job chapter 30. Told you we ain't long today. Some of you all need to get used to sitting down because the people that 
me and Mike, you should pray with. They've been studying, uh, reading the book of Ayah since about the third or the fourth day of last week. Ayah chapter 30. I'll stop this in verse 8. And we're going to read 1 through 31. But now they that are younger than I have me in derision, whose abbas I would have disdained to have set with the dogs of my flock. Yea, where to might the strength of their hands profit me, in whom old age was perished. For want and famine they were solitary, fleeing into the wilderness in former time desolate and waste who cut up mallows by the bushes and juniper roots for their meat. They were driven forth from among men. They cried after them as after a thief to dwell in the cliffs of the valleys in the caves of the earth and in the rocks. Among the bushes they brayed under nettles they were gathered together. They were children of fools, yet children of base men. They were viler than the earth. And now am I their soul? Yea, I am their byword. They abhor me. They flee far from me and spare not the spit in my face. Because he have loosed my cord and afflicted me, they have also let loose the bridle before me. Upon my right hand rise the youth. They push away my feet and they raise up against me the ways of their destruction. They mar my path they set forward my calamity, they have no helper. They came upon me as a wide breaking in of waters, and the desolation they rolled themselves upon me. Terrors are turned upon me that pursue my soul as the wind, and my welfare pass away as a cloud. And now my soul is poured out upon me, the days of affliction have taken hold upon me. My bones are pierced in me in the night season, and my sinews take no rest. By the great force of my dis-ease is my garment changed. It binds me about as the collar of my coat. He hath cast me into the mire, and I am become like dust and ashes. I cry unto thee, and thou do not hear me. I stand up, and thou regard me not. Thou art become cruel to me with thy strong hand. Thou opposest thyself against me. Thou lifts me up to the wind. Thou causest me to ride upon it and dissolve my substance. For I know that thou will bring me to death and to the house appointed for all living. Howbeit he will not stretch out his hand to the grave, though they cry in his destruction. Did not I weep for him that was in trouble? Was not my soul grieved for the poor? When I looked for good, then evil came unto me. And when I waited for light, there came darkness. My bowels boiled and wrestled not. The days of affliction prevented me. I went mourning without the sun. I stood up and I cried in the congregation. I'm a brother to dragons, a companion to owls. My skin is black upon me, and my bones are burnt with heat. My heart also is turned to mourning, and my organ into the voice of them that weep. Hallelujah. Let's check this out. Verse 8. They were children of fools, yea, children of base men. They were viler than the earth. This word fools here is that dude name again. Nabal, entry number 5036. Stupid, wicked, and, and pious. And it was part of number 5034, Nabal, N-A-B-E-L, to wilt, fall away, fail, faint. All right? So they were children of the impious. Children of the stupid, children of the wicked, 
children of base men. Who child are yours? Who your child of? Huh? If a tree known by fruit, who are you a child of? Huh? Got children of Baal, children of this, children of that, children of that pagan star. You got children of uh, 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 deceit. You got children of paganism. You got children of many different sorts. Who child are you? Ask yourself. A lot of Israel's mad. Can't help that. I know here in verse 9, Ayab is like, now I am their song, I am their byword, they abhor me, they flee far from me, and spare not to spit in my face because you have loosed my cord, afflicted me. They have also let loose the bridle before me. Oh yeah, definitely. When you don't have, ain't nobody around. And even when you have the truth, still ain't nobody going to want to be around you. Everybody want that other thing. You know, a lot of Israel is out here uh, uh, still committing uh, uh, spiritual adultery in the sense of they're running to and fro looking for a word from the Most High when the Most High is trying to give you a word yourself. You don't want to let his Ruach do what it do because evidently you don't have his Ruach. And, they, they run to and, fro and, up and, and down in the earth yeah. like Satan. Mm -hmm. To and fro, up and down. The sign of the C-R-O-S-S. -S. That's one of them pagan deities, C-R-O-S-S. -S. All right? Let's take a look at one more, one more scripture. Chapter 42 in Ion, the last chapter. We're going 1 through 17. Be the one that eschews evil. All right? All right, be the one that eschews evil. Do something different. Chapter 42, verse 1. Then I uh, answered Yah and said, I know that thou can, can do everything and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees thee. Wherefore I abhor myself, and repent in dust and ashes. And it was so that after Yah had spoken these words unto Ayah, Yah said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends, for ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right as my Ebed Ayab has. Therefore, take unto you now seven bulls and seven rams. Go to my Ebed Ayab and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering. And my Ebed Ayab shall pray for you, for him I will I accept, lest I deal with you after your folly, and that ye have not spoken of me the thing which is right, like my Ebed Ayab. So Eliphaz the Temanite and Bildad the Shuhite and Zophar the Namathite went and did according as Yah commanded them, Yah also accepted Ayah. And Yah turned the captivity of Ayah when he prayed for his friends. Also, Yah gave Ayah twice as much as he had before. Then came there unto him all his brethren, all his sisters, 
and all they that had been of his acquaintance before, and did eat bread with him in his house, and they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that Yah had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money, and every one an earring of gold. So Yah blessed the latter end of Ayah more than his beginning, for he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camel, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 she asses. He had also seven sons, three daughters. And he called the name of the first Yamima, the name of the second Keziah, the name of the third Karen Hapuch. And in all the land where no women found so fair as the daughters of Ayah, and their Abba gave them inheritance among their brethren. After this lived Ayah a hundred and forty years, and saw his sons, his son's sons, even four generations. So Ayah died old and full of days. Hallelujah. Listen. Let's take a look at this word folly. Nabala, entry number 5039, means wickedness, crime, vile, villainy. All right? So here in verse 8, this dude, the Most High, is talking about Eliphaz the Temanite and his two homeboys because of their crime that they spoke against the Most High. They didn't rightly divide the word of truth. All right. They didn't speak of the most high. That ye have not spoken of me the thing which is right. Like my Ebed Ayah. Listen. Listen to verse 9. Eliphaz and Temanai, Bildad the Shuhai, Zophar the Namathite. Went and did according as Yah commanded them. Yah also accepted Ayah. Warriors, some of you all may have to show enough. Uh, uh, pray for some people in order to get your prayers heard. All right. And I'm going to tell you some real good stuff. Some people don't won't understand that neither. Okay. Listen to verse 10. Yah turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. You got some in Israel that'll tell you that, well, we ain't supposed to be praying for people. That's what the church do. And no, nah, you ain't supposed to pray for nobody. One of our great patriarchs was the first intercessor in scripture, Abraham. He had to pray for that king. Now here it is, I, I, Job, they say Job time, if you was to do this in uh, chronological with dates and all of that, Job time would be in the time of Genesis. The oldest book in here. And he doing sacrifices already with the sacrificial system. He knew the Almighty. Who do you know? Who are you a child of? What's in your wallet? No. <laughs> Let's pray. <laughs> Father, you as we kneel before your throne of mercy and grace, Father, allow us to figure out we your children whose side we on. Allow us to figure out whose child we are. And allow us to speak the thing that which is right concerning you in the midst of all that we go through. We ask for your mercy and grace right now, Father, that you would sanctify us in thy word, for thy word is true. Allow this word to be embedded in the hearts and minds of those who would listen to this word and allow them to bring forth fruit unto thy glory. Never let us be ashamed, me and my Isha, Father Yah, as we look to you. 
We ask this in Yeshua HaMashiach name we pray. Hallelujah. You will be blessed, be safe. May the Most High keep you, but think about who you serving. What you serving. Think about what you speaking. Who you speaking about. Because some of you all are showing up doing damage to yourselves. It ain't Hashatan, it's you. Shabbat Shalom.